It's April 1945. With the war's end in sight, Hitler and few remaining German forces become surrounded in Berlin. Hearing the news, Hitler flies into a rage and orders his last remaining forces, the 9th and 12th Armies, to relieve the city. But the Fuhrer doesn't realize his divisions existed just on paper. The reality is very different. To save their soldiers' lives, the two army commanders take a daring decision. This is the last German offensive of World War II, the Battle of Halba. In early 1945, the Red Army reached the bank of the Oder River. During the stunning Vistula Oder Offensive, the Soviets advanced almost 500 kilometers in just two weeks, being only 70 kilometers away from Berlin by the 31st of January. The Red Army stopped at the Oder River, allowing its units to resupply, reorganize, and mop up pockets of German resistance in Königsberg and Pomerania. By the beginning of April, Königsberg fell, and three Soviet fronts were assembled for the planned attack on the German capital the fascist lair, as the Soviets called it. More than two million men, 6,000 tanks and 7,000 aircraft were brought for the final assault on Berlin. Only 100,000 Germans were opposing them. General Gotthard Heinrichi, commanding the German forces, used his tactical knowledge to make the most of what he had. The Germans built multiple lines of defense and only defended the Oder Riverbank with a light skirmishing screen, but they heavily fortified the heights which overlooked the river and put most of the available forces there. In the early hours of April 16th, the Soviet offensive towards Berlin began. The Soviets aimed to obliterate the German defenses with a massive artillery bombardment. 9,000 artillery pieces and Katyushas fired over 500,000 shells in the first 30 minutes alone. Well before dawn, the Soviets attacked across the Oder and the Nysa rivers, but Heinrichi and Theodor Busa, commander of the 9th Army, anticipated the Soviet artillery barrage and withdrew their soldiers just before the Soviet artillery would have obliterated them. So when the Red Army started its advance, the soldiers of Georgi Zhukov's 1st Belarusian Front encountered stiff resistance. Heavy battles raged on for several days, with both sides suffering heavy casualties. But on the 19th of April, the Soviets broke through the third and final defensive line. Now, nothing stood between the Red Army and Berlin but broken German formations. Hitler ordered the 9th Army to hold its ground and then attack the Soviet forces, along with SS General Felix Steiner's 3rd Panzer Corps. But this is what Hitler did not understand. The divisions on his maps, units which had more than 10,000 men at full strength, were reduced to only several hundred soldiers in some cases. For Steiner, Busse, and Heinrichi, it was clear that such an offensive was completely suicidal. Heinrichi told Hitler's staff that if the 9th Army did not retreat immediately, it would be encircled by the Red Army. On April 22nd, Hitler completely lost his temper when he realized that his orders were not going to be carried out. He declared the war was lost and started blaming his generals. In an attempt to calm Hitler down, Colonel General Alfred Jodl, the chief of staff of the German army, suggested that the 12th Army, which was facing the American forces, could disengage and move towards Berlin, as it was highly unlikely that the Allied forces would cross the Elbe. Hitler immediately ordered General Walter Wenck, the 12th Army's commander, to move towards the German capital. Theodor Buss's 9th Army was also ordered to move west and link up with Wenck's forces. While it was clear that breaking through to Berlin was impossible, Hitler's decision gave the German commanders an opportunity to save sizable numbers of German troops and civilians, which could then retreat further west and surrender to the Americans instead of facing harsh Soviet imprisonment. Nevertheless, the Soviet advance trapped the 9th Army by the 24th of April. Before being encircled, the 9th Army had already suffered heavy losses in the Battle of the Zelo Heights. It is estimated that, at the start of the encirclement, it had fewer than 1,000 guns and mortars, approximately 79 tanks, and less than 200 combat-ready armored fighting vehicles left. In all, there were about 80,000 men in the pocket. The number of tanks also included 14 Tiger II tanks of the 102nd Heavy Panzer Battalion, but what they lacked most were basic supplies, water, food, and fuel. Attempts to supply the pocket from the air proved useless, and the 9th Army was forced to make do with the few resources it had. 
The pocket into which the Ninth Army had been pushed was a region of lakes and woodlands in the Spray Forest. After the Soviets encircled Berlin, they turned to destroy the Germans in the Halba pocket. The Red Army had an overwhelming advantage in numbers, with five times more men, seven times more guns, four times more tanks, and complete air superiority. But the desperation of the German soldiers would prove crucial in their escape attempt. They had two choices, Soviet captivity or fighting for a chance of survival. Most of them chose the latter. The 12th Army's relief attempt started on April 24th. Venk's units simultaneously attacked towards Bus's 9th Army as well as towards Potsdam in an effort to open a corridor into Berlin. The 9th Army was also prepared to attack towards Venk's formations, with the heavy Tiger II tanks forming its vanguard. On the night of April 25th to 26th, a new order was issued to the 9th and 12th Armies by Hitler. He reiterated that Busse and Venk's armies should unite and attack towards Berlin. But by this time, both commanders disregarded Hitler's orders and focused on saving as many men as they could. The final army conference of the 9th Army took place on the 28th of April. At this point, contact was lost with most of the units inside the pocket, which became a mix of units from several divisions. The conference found that the only possible breakout route had to lead through Halba, but the German commanders had no information about the Soviet forces they were about to face. On the evening of April 25th, the first breakout attempt was organized. Busse ordered the two battle groups, Kampfgruppe von Luck, consisting of the 21st Panzer Division and Kampfgruppe Pipkorn, containing the 35th SS Police Grenadier Division, both named after their commanders, to attempt a breakout in the direction of the road center of Bauruth. This attempt failed, and the Germans had heavy casualties, also losing the two commanders. Pipkorn was killed during the battle, and von Luck taken prisoner on April 27th. Few of the survivors reached the Elba. These forces and weapons were sorely missed during later breakout attempts. The next morning, the German vanguard found a weak point between two Soviet armies, and many German troops were able to escape before the Soviets plugged the gap. The fighting was intense. German units were constantly attacked from the air, as well as being targeted by artillery, which bombarded German positions with tree-bursting shells, causing significant damage. The sandy soil made it impossible to dig foxholes, and there was insufficient time to build more elaborate structures. As a result, there was no protection from wooden splinters created by artillery and tank shells, which the Soviet forces deliberately aimed to explode at treetop height. During this time, the German vanguard was spotted by a Luftwaffe plane. This made Hitler furious. He realized that Busse was attempting to break out west and not to come to his aid in Berlin. Although Hitler's staff sent several messages demanding that the army turn towards Berlin, they received no answer. On the night of April 28th, the German forces attempted their third and final breakout attempt. They broke through the Soviet 50th Guards Rifle Division and created a corridor from Halba to Walther Venk's lines but they paid a very high price, being permanently bombed with Katyushas and artillery. By this time, the German troops in the pocket were spread out over 70 kilometers. The situation in Halba was desperate for the Germans. There was considerable tension between the Waffen-SS and Wehrmacht troops, with both accusing the other of only helping their own. In Halba itself, some of the civilians took pity on very young soldiers and allowed them to change out of their uniforms into civilian clothes. In one documented case, an SS man intended to shoot a Panzerfaust into a cellar with about 40 civilians and young Wehrmacht soldiers in it, only to be shot dead by one of the soldiers. During the following days, the fighting became more and more confused. If the Germans came into contact with Soviet forces and overran a Soviet position, the Red Army counterattacked not only with ground forces, but also with artillery and aircraft. Losses on both sides were very high. By the time the fighting was over, around the beginning of May, about 25,000 German soldiers had escaped and joined up with the 12th Army. The combined remnants of the 9th and 12th Armies then retreated westwards towards the Elba so that they could surrender to American forces. They also brought along many civilians who were running away from the Red Army. 
The bulk of the fleeing German forces, along with several thousand civilians, reached and crossed the Elbe using the partially destroyed bridge at Tangermünde between May 4 and May 7, 1945, surrendering to elements of the U.S. 102nd Infantry Division. The death toll of the Battle of Halba was very high. About 30,000 Germans lost their lives, along with approximately 10,000 civilians. On the other side, the Soviets had more than 20,000 casualties. This last German offensive was one of desperation, of soldiers and civilians trying to escape the Red Tide, as the Russians were well known for their atrocities. Soldiers knew that they would probably face a difficult fate if they surrendered to the Red Army and did what they could to reach the American line. As Sabaton put it in their song, Hearts of Iron, which describes the Battle of Halba, this was not a classical planned offensive. It was more of a rescue action, one last effort before ending the war. A few days after the German survivors surrendered to the American forces, World War II in Europe came to an end, and those who survived the Battle of Halba should have definitely considered themselves lucky to escape from such fierce fighting.